Well, I sure hope you've had a chance to watch part one in this series, although it's really not necessary to watch them in any particular order. This, of course, is part two, where we continue our overview of the wonderful things to see and do in Armenia. All right, let's do this. Once again, this is an overview of just some of the highlights of Armenia, and I'm presenting them in a logical order of travel and as we visit them on my Treasures of Armenia and Georgia tour. In future videos, I plan to go into more detail on select locations, but for now, I'd just like to give you a taste of each. Our first stop is another spa town called Dilijan, which is located in the Tavush province of Armenia. It's one of the most important resorts in the country and actually situated within the Dilijan National Park. This quaint little alpine town is home to a number of Armenian artisans and Dilijan is often referred to by locals as Little Switzerland. Dilijan is worth spending a night or two, especially if you're looking to enjoy some fresh mountain air, do some hiking and or enjoy some spa treatments. One of the many unique things to look forward to on this trip is a visit to a Russian Molokan village called Fioli Tovo, located just a short drive from Dilijan. Here we visit the home of a wonderful couple who invite us in to learn about their culture and way of life and have homemade sweets and tea served from a traditional Russian samovar, an often ornate metal container traditionally used to heat and boil water for tea and other hot beverages. According to a 2011 survey, there are roughly 2,900 Malakons in Armenia. One very important thing to note is that photography of people in the village is pretty much forbidden on the streets, but we did have special permission from some locals to photograph them as they went about their day. If you watched part one of this series, then you've probably figured out that Armenia is a very religious country and a land of many monasteries and very similar in that respect to the Republic of Georgia. My Armenia and Georgia trip isn't focused on religion, but we do visit a number of monasteries throughout this tour simply because they're almost always situated in the most beautiful and peaceful settings and make for wonderful photo ops and quite a number of them have been designated UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One such place we visit near Dilijan is called Hagartsin Monastery and it's set back in the nearby forest up a winding road and there, if you time it just right, you can witness the most wonderful gata being prepared by the local ladies and even have a chance to taste it too. Gata is a sort of Armenian sweetbread that comes in many different forms, but here at the monastery, it's made of a simple dough formed in a round patty and generously stuffed with jam and other tasty fillings. It's a real treat. In part one, we visited Noratus, where there's a very large cemetery featuring more than 700 hand-carved hotchkars, which are unique Armenian monuments often used as headstones, but also with many other uses as well. Hotchkars are said to be characteristic of medieval Christian Armenian art, and I promised in part one that we'd visit the studio of one of the most friendly and charismatic locals I think I've met anywhere in the world. His name is Mr. Bogdan, and he's a master carver of hotchkars, and has been for decades. He practices this dyeing art in a very nondescript workshop hidden away back in a block of communist era buildings, but it's one of the best visits to any artisan's workshop I've ever found, and this is something I seek out on all my trips. Mr. Bogdan has a happy-go-lucky spirit and often likes to sing and play his instruments more than demonstrate the craft he's mastered so well, but it's a lot of fun for our groups to join in and sing with him. On my first visit to his shop in Vanadzor, Mr. Bogdan spent a lot of time explaining his craft and just as much time teaching me songs and plying me with locally popular fruit-infused vodka. It was great fun and I couldn't wait to bring my group back the following year to meet this truly wonderful man. Oh, yeah. 
The drive from Vanadzor to Gyumri is about an hour and takes us through a varied landscape. You'll often see the local sheep herders and cattlemen driving their animals from one place to the next on the two-lane country roads found in this area. It's pretty great. Arriving in Gumri, you'll realize this is a fairly large urban center with well over 100,000 inhabitants. There's a lovely old section of town that's slowly being restored and is well worth a walk around. As in most larger towns in Armenia, there's a public square with a number of churches and monasteries conveniently located for local worshipers. There's a distinct Soviet-era feel to this part of Armenia, and even our hotel, although it has all the modern amenities, puts off this vibe, which is really great to experience. The rooms are huge but simple, and the hotel is really well located in the heart of town just off the main square. One of my favorite things to do anywhere, and certainly here, is to walk around the local market. There aren't a lot of tourists in Gyumri, and so you'll see almost all locals going about their daily shopping chores. And we found the vendors to be extremely friendly and in true Armenian fashion, will offer up plenty of samples of their fruits and vegetables to try. There are two other things we do in Gyumri that are worth noting. One is a visit to the local blacksmith's shop where he shows us how he masterfully does his thing. And he'll even let those who are brave enough have a go. The other thing we do, at least the willing male participants on this trip, is we get a haircut and shave at the local barber shop. This is something I often recommend as a tip for going local. Don't just do the tourist things, but do the everyday things the locals do, like getting a haircut and a shave, or a manicure and a pedicure, or something similar. Me and the boys had some fun and a one-of-a-kind experience getting a haircut and a shave at a traditional barber shop, which happens to be located just across the street from our hotel. Through Arpy, our local guide, we were told that one of the men had been working there for more than 40 years, and the place is chock full of old photos and rusty instruments that barbers have used for decades. It was really fun. As we make our way back towards Yerevan for an additional night or two, we get up early for a morning visit to Geghard, a medieval monastery dating back to the 4th century, and one that's been partially carved out of the cliff face of the surrounding mountain. It's just about an hour outside of the capital, and this is another stunning and must-see place situated at the end of a canyon road. You're sure to beat the crowds with the same idea if you get there at open, which is 9 a.m. Park and walk up the short incline to the entrance of the monastery, have a look around the courtyard to admire the exterior, watch and play with the ever-present birds, and then be sure to get inside the main chapel, which is simply stunning and unbelievably dates back to 1215. It's no surprise that the entire complex has been designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Here's a tip for you. As with any dark place like this, lit only by a few candles and some natural light coming in through small openings in the walls and ceiling, it's not easy to photograph inside. So I recommend that you get into aperture priority mode and then be sure to open up your aperture as wide as possible, which in turn will give you the fastest shutter speed. And then set your camera to auto ISO and if necessary, lean up against a wall or pillar for maximum stability so that you can have some hope of getting a few shots in these difficult conditions for photography. Next, it's time to take the short drive back through the same canyon and make your way to Garni, which has a population of about 7,000 inhabitants. There's evidence that this area was first occupied back in the third century BC 
and one of the main reasons to visit is the Hellenistic Garni Temple, which is strategically set on a precipice at a bend in the Atsat River. According to Wikipedia, the Temple of Garni is the only standing Greco-Roman colonnaded building in Armenia and the former Soviet Union, and the views from this vantage point of the surrounding area are simply spectacular. Nearby is the Garni Gorge, which when I was there required a four-wheel drive vehicle to visit. These can be easily arranged with local drivers who make the short 10-minute drive down a somewhat precarious and rough road that was being updated and repaired the last time I was there, so it may be easier to visit these days. The reason to make the effort to reach the bottom of the gorge is something referred to as the Symphony of Stones, an incredible natural display of basalt columns carved out by the river. Just amazing! One last thing we do in Garni is to have the most incredible lunch at the home of a local family in a simply spectacular setting overlooking the gorge. Here we also see how they hand make traditional lavash bread in underground ovens. Be sure to check out my previous video where I highlight this incredible experience. Hello, you know what I am eating? Armenian burger. What we have here? Armenian cheese and some grease and in lavash, so you can eat it all day long and for breakfast and for dinner and for lunch, so enjoy it! <laughs> well, I sure hope you enjoyed this video about the highlights of Armenia part 2 and be sure to check out part 1. If you'd like to experience each of these locations in person, you can get more information about my upcoming Treasures of Armenia and Georgia trip by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, question of the day. Are you tempted to visit Armenia? Which of these sites would you most like to see? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed part two in this series of things to do in Armenia, please share it with other great travelers like yourself and give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Head on over to the continentaldrifter.co website for more travel and photography tips and to get my latest download. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.